I think essential oils are powerful. I had to start using those instead of cologne, instead of uh, underarm deodorant. It used to have various scents in them that was not essential oils. Yeah. Um, just I, I, And a lot of our household cleaners, I've had people on recently talking about the toxicity and all the household cleaners. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like essential oils is something we've known about, but we've forgotten about. Yeah. So how do you bring it back to the forefront of people's minds when they just want to buy all the name brands with the cutesy marketing? Well, I think, um, you know, the, just the knowledge of knowing. Um, now that I know more, you know, I can share more. And then, you know, it doesn't hurt to have a good product that's going to help you, you know, really soothe um, dry skin or whatever you, you, you got going on. And then also, too, the aromatherapy piece, the healing yeah. Um, there's so many benefits. And again, I get goosebumps just thinking about how it brought out of my dark place. Um, and I get, I get a lot of not just just doing the soaping and making the products. It, it's, it's therapeutic for me as well. So, you get a secondhand buzz off of making the product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah. I, I, one of these days, I need to come to your little setup there in your workshop and see you in action. Maybe I'll do like a little video Instagram of showing you doing your your magic of making your stuff so that yeah, would be fun that would be fun yes yes so okay so you started doing the research on the essential oils and tell us about what changes started happening because you obviously you were still in the grieving process still dealing lots of anxiety you were in this transitionary period of your life tell it continue the story so I just, you know, I, I also studied about like chakras and, and trying to learn and figure out yeah. why I wasn't coming out of the and, and coming out of where I was feeling. You know, I mean, I could deal. I thought, you know, I could deal with being with certain with people that I knew, you know, whatever. But it was just I wanted to come out of all of that. I want to get back to my normalcy of myself. And as I started um, using the essential oils, I started noticing changes. My mood was changing. Um, I got off all the antidepressants, thank God. It was, you know, a combination of all of that working out and just getting back into who I was as an individual before that. And I just had to make a conscious decision that I wasn't going to let this person who took my son and my cousin away take any more of my life away. He had already taken enough, you know. And so, um, I, again, I just I, I eased back into, I got out of graduated school and eased back into the workforce and, you know, continued to do my research and do my studies just to make sure I was good. Um, and then when COVID hit, I said, you know what, I'm going to learn more about skincare and took a holistic skincare. And boy, here come the soap and the sugar scrubs that you love so much out of all of that. So, you know, it was the body butters, and now I have a whole line of things that I, I uh, make just from that, just from studying and learning about, you know, natural products and essential oils and yes. bring to the table. Yeah. And what I love is you have a diverse uh, set of products. It's not all just one set. It's not just one flavor. You got lots of flavors. You take suggestions from customers. <laughs> yeah. I know I've given you, hey, how about doing like a, a, a Christmas one for me? And you made this peppermint. Uh, bath salt thingy. You even gave me some that messed up. Hey, these aren't great, but here, you take them because I know you'll appreciate them. And I did. I appreciated them. I actually, you know what I ended up doing because it crumbled so much um, because that you were kind of upset that it crumbled. I was like, yeah. okay, I'll just start rubbing it on my body. And I loved it. It just gave this cooling sensation. And I was like, ah. Oh. And then that, that <laughs> effervescence throughout the day. This is what I love about using like your sugar scrubs. The reason I buy so many of them is I literally put it on every day all around my neck and shoulder area so that I'm smelling all day. It keeps my spirits high. You know, I'm very high energy. I'm always happy and kind of positive. That's just who I am. And I credit my diet, number one. Yeah. Some of the lifestyle habits and things that I do, like the ice baths. I know you mock me. Oh, my, my ice bath. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One day, you you trying to get me, you easing me into the, the sh cold shower piece. Yes. It'll be a minute well, for <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to invite you to my house, and we're going to get you in that tub out there. <laughs> She's like, no, you're not. <laughs> hey, you want to talk about anxiety and depression and dealing with life? Get, getting in an ice bath really is revolutionary. I, 
I, I know people look at it and think it's kind of crazy. And of course, I go to the farmer's market in the winter and you can attest to this. What am I wearing? T-shirt, shorts, and clogs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm in a I'm in a coat. I got a heater on me. And here walks Jimmy up yeah. the t-shirt and clogs. And he's like, look, hey, I'm just getting started. I'm just, I'm warming up. Yes. <laughs> yes. All, all these people, they're all bundled up. And here I am looking like it's summertime, summertime. <laughs> but like when you do the ice baths, I'm used to the cold. Plus, I do my walks out in the cold. I know you've watched some of my mm -hmm. I've done my walk and talk videos and it's like 30 degrees outside. No big deal to me to walk in that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. All the different things that you can do. And of course I'm a big fan of eating healthy fats, minimizing carbohydrates that would exacerbate a lot of anxiety and things. We know mm -hmm. the brain is made up of 70% fat. So if you're not eating healthy fats, meaning saturated fats, monounsaturated fats in your diet, omega-3 fats, all the good fats, yes. it's not going to have a brain that's going to function properly. So this is why I think a good diet, I think doing different modalities like the cold therapy, like exercise, it's a good release yes. as well. And like aromatherapy, all combined. It's not just a, a shoot it at one thing exactly. and that's going to solve everything. It's a whole lot of things. It's a lot of things. And you have to want to put the work in. And you have, you know, I had to just say, look, hey, I got to get determined enough to make this happen for me and put myself out in the forefront. And that's what I did. And I'm so happy that I did. And, you know, this, you know, what I do now, I, I'm, I haven't been this happy in such a long time because I know I'm making a difference, number one. And I'm sharing some things that I've learned, you know, and I'm also going to be able to keep my son's memory alive. So those mean so much more to me, you know, and I'm just glad to be able to reap those benefits at this point. You know, it took a while, but I'm here. Well, and look, I didn't even know about your story. When we were setting up this interview, I'm like, hey, I love your products. You're my favorite vendor. Besides my meat vendor, I do love my meat vendor right next door to you. But besides that vendor, you're my favorite vendor at the market. And I was like, I wanted to talk to you about your products. But then I was like, do you have a story? Or oh, my son got killed. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, how? What? You're so happy what it just was shocking to me just like it's probably shocking to you to hear that i've been through stuff yeah. in my life because you yeah. look at and you think that that guy's always been happy in his life but when you go through stuff arlene it makes you appreciate life all the more it makes you want to live it all the more abundantly i want you to be it makes you want to be kind and loving and compassionate to your fellow human uh, as as the old Bible song used to say, red and yellow, black and white, you are yeah. red. Because like, we, we should love each other. Yeah, because, I mean, we're not, no one's promised another day. And, um, you know, it's like you have to take the, you know, there's nothing I could do, number one. I had to just come to that reality because all those emotions was going on inside of me. You know, I wish he hadn't done this. If only that, if, if, you know, but the reality was, regardless of what I thought about and how I wished and hoped, Michael and Ty was not coming back. And I had to come to that reality and say, okay, you got to move on with that reality. And so I think that once I came face to face with that, I was ready to heal. I was ready to do the work um, and not just ball up in the knot and just, you know, let life just keep happening around me. So, yeah. yeah. You know how many people go through their lives holding on to trauma like that and never deal with it. Did you go to therapy at all or did yeah, you? I went to therapy early on and um, my therapist, he, you know, he, he was like telling, you know, telling me that I may have to do shock therapy, you know, but we, it didn't get to that. And, um, you know, thank God um, it took a while, like I said, but yeah, that's, a lot of it, too, was me just trying to get answers to what happened. Yes. So I think a lot of that early on. We all, as human thinker, mm -hmm. you're a thinker like I am, you know, we want an explanation. We, we want, want it spelled out for us. And yep. when we can't have resolution in the form of why, why did this happen? Why did this have to happen to my middle child? You know, why couldn't it happen to this child? I'm just, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, but like it all these things swirl in your head and you're not going to always get the answers. You're and not. so, you know, good for your therapist kind of recognizing, whoa, we got some major stuff going on here. 
uh, there's this uh, development in therapy called cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. where you reframe things. But I don't think it works in the in the case of like a sudden grief, mm -hmm. like you had, like that. That's a tough situation because it charred your brain like suddenly overnight. You yeah. became a different person, and so thankfully through aromatherapy and through some of the other things you were doing, you were able to pull yourself out without the shock therapy. I've actually interviewed uh, one guy on here who did go through the shock therapy. Wow. Um, and he said it did help, but he wishes in hindsight he didn't have, because he's lost parts of his memory from that. Yeah. And like so that. it's it's kind of dangerous. Uh, by the way, my friend Nerdy Nutrition says the two of you are bringing me such life today. Thank you, Nerdy oh, Nutrition. thank you. <laughs> it's important to talk about it. And I think, um, you know, a lot of times when you're going through grief, you really, you... Me personally, I just, I wanted to kind of like blend on in. I wanted to, when I was around my friends, I wanted to seem normal. Yes. But then I started making peace with the fact that, hey, look, this is who you are. This is your life. This is your story. Yeah. You need to be able to talk freely about how you feel. Yes. I had to start working on some of that. And, and I just, I was only further suppressing it when I was trying to fit in and trying to, you know, seem like nothing was wrong. It was a yeah. lot. I wasn't. Isn't it horrible how society expects you to have this very short window to grieve and you're supposed to just move on as if nothing happened? Look, I think everybody grieves at their own pace. And yeah. there's people that in the moment, like my brother Kevin, uh, my only full-blooded brother Kevin, died at the age of 41 in 2008. Oh, wow. And he wow. had heart disease, morbid obesity. He was just... And it was a tragic life. He had a horrible wife and treated him horribly, all these things. And when he died, I didn't cry. I stayed strong for all of my family. Mm. About a week after the funeral, it hit me. Yeah. And it's one of those things that I went, wait, I thought I was okay. Yes. But I was a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. And then yeah. I, and, and actually, you know, quite frankly, that's when I started gaining some of my weight back was yeah. during that period of time. And it wasn't that I was eating crappy foods. I think kind of like what we were talking about with that book earlier, The Body Keeps Score. The body knew something was going on up here and it manifested in all kinds of processes in your body um, that make you gain weight, that make your body start to be more inflammatory and all these kind of processes that we don't even think about how this can impact your physical body. Yes, even now, it's been 10 years. Yes. And around the time of the anniversary of my son and my cousin's death, my body, I can feel it. Like, it's like a reminder. And I yep. have to kind of push through it and say, okay, you know, it's, I recognize it now. But I know, I mean, my son was here for 22 years. I loved him unconditionally as I do my other two children. That's not going to go away. But I'm living with the grief. And guess what? I'm going to live with it until I die. Yes. And I will, you know, cry happy tears because I've, I've made it through to the other side. I know he would love me. He didn't want me to be the way I was. But um, I'm not going to just, it's not, it's, it's no, it's no like wake up and it's, it's gone. It's over with. You just uh -oh. have to live with it. That's what yeah. it is. Live with the grief. And that's okay. And I say now grief is the price we pay for love. That's what I, you know. Yes. How can you not? Yes. Can not grieve him. He was a great person. And anybody who's been through that, you know, you just have to live through it. Learn how to how to survive through it and just face the reality of it. Like I said, number one, and just move forward. Yeah. Now, I was talking to my mom over the holidays. I went to see her down in Florida. And she's like, you know, there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about Kevin. And I'm like, how could you not? He's your... <laughs> He was your firstborn child. I would be shocked if, you know, even since 2008, what's that been? 14 years that yeah. he's gone. Um, and same, like I dedicate most of my work. I'm so passionate about my work because I'm trying to save other Kevins out there from befalling the same fate since his was kind of a diet and lifestyle thing that led yeah. him to his heart attacks and dying. Um, yeah. And so same thing, like you're dedicating your life and what you're doing for the sake yeah. of that beautiful son, what what was his name, by the way? His name is his name is, was Mike. His name is Michael, and he had a lot of dreams and aspirations. And yes, so I, I well, see that coming. Well, 
What were his dreams? I'm just curious. He wanted to go to NASCAR. He wanted to be, um, he wanted to go to NCI. Um, oh, wow. Dude, and yeah, he had, Michael had ADHD. 